one of the most glamorous stars the screen has ever known. And one of the most beautiful women in the world. Well, can we all say it together? I think we all know. Girl in the world. Petty <laughs> LeBond. When we think of an inventor, the first answer we normally have is not a devious Hollywood actress. But this is Hedy Lamar, a free spirit who broke through the sexual stereotypes forced upon her by Hollywood. Lamar used her mind to overcome these restraints, yet the world still refused to see what she truly was, capable. Born into a Jewish family in Vienna, Austria as Hedwig Keisler in 1914, her father, Emil Keisler, devoted ample time to Hetty in her childhood to develop her passion for inventing. He was the only man in Hetty's life to cherish her for more than her appearance. At the tender age of 18, Hetty experienced a turning point in her life when starring in the infamous 1933 film of Ecstasy. Today, critics denounce this film as sexually degrading women as Hetty was manipulated into running nude on screen. Worldwide backlash damaged her rising career and labeled her as scandalous and irresponsible. Hetty's emergence in theater attracted Friedrich Mandel, a renowned Austrian arms manufacturer for Adolf Hitler. Mandel stopped at nothing to court her, but during their marriage, Mandel displayed his true colors of a deceitful partner. After Hetty's true inspiration, her father Emil passed away. She could no longer sit in the darkness of her toxic marriage, so she disguised herself as a maid and fled to London. When arriving in London in 1937, she met Louis B. Mayer, co-founder of Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer Studios. Hetty persuaded Mayer to increase her paycheck as an actress for MGM Studios to over triple the original amount before reaching Los Angeles. Under the strong recommendation from MGM Studios, Hetty took on a new last name. She became the Hetty Lamar. But this new life pushed away her Jewish background. People would say, you're Jewish, and I'm like, no. And I called mom and said, mom, are we Jewish? And she said, don't be ridiculous. In 1938, Mayer introduced Lamar to the golden age of Hollywood, where she confronted a linguistic barrier. Although her face was well known, she received few lines. Directors often dismissed her acting to profit from her looks. Over time, her dedication to learning English led her to star in her first American film, Algiers, with the leading male actors of the time. Unfortunately, the thing was a lot of her roles were kind of obviously she was typecasted at this time. So she was, you know, she was this beautiful foreign woman. So she would be portrayed sure. as the dumb, exotic sexualized girl in all these films. A new chapter of Lamar's life opened when she dated Howard Hughes in 1938, a reverend pilot who introduced Lamar to many scientists and high-tech lab equipment. And he knew of Lamar's interest in engineering, so he told his employees that he had all these engineers and scientists working under him, that they had to do whatever she wants to work on. So, so she, she designed an improved version of the traffic light and versions of today's modern, streamlined airplane wings, improving Hughes airplanes. Lamar's passion for inventing skyrocketed when she met George Anthile, an American avant-garde composer in 1940. They both had experienced an enlightening moment that fueled their motivation to defeat the Nazis. Hetty had read an article of how a British boat carrying 406 people on their way to get evacuated from World War II was torpedoed by a German submarine. After hearing of the children who lost their lives in this tragedy, she knew there must be something she could do to help. The two inventors worked together to create a device that would improve torpedo communications. The Nazis easily jammed the radio-controlled torpedoes the United States used. This was a costly barrier the Allies' military could not even seem to break. For their invention, Lamar took inspiration from the Philic Radio Company's Magic Box that allowed listeners to wirelessly change their radio channels. The piano also became inspiration. To elaborate, they realized that the signals between the torpedo and its control center could be rapidly changed by a piano roll. The 88 keys on the piano 
also inspired the duo's inclusion of a range of 88 frequencies on the spectrum. Because the frequencies were moving so rapidly, the signals were now encrypted and unjammable. Anthile also used a player piano mechanism from a piece he had composed, the Ballet Mechanique, to control this frequency hopping sequence. Lamar's idea was deemed the spread spectrum technology. On August 11, 1942, the United States Patent and Trademark Office granted Lamar and Anthile patent 2,292,387 for a secret communication system. But when presented to the Navy, the Navy rejected the donated innovation. Well, the Navy looked at this and said, yeah, no, nah, we don't think that. The mechanism is too bulky to be incorporated into the average torpedo. Other factors influence this, however, such as how foreign inventions were not typically trusted during the World War II era, especially not one that an alien actress had created. After all, technological developments at this time were typically not from females. Yet the activists still found a way to help the United States. Through financing its military, Lamar worked nonstop to get war bonds, selling her beauty through kissing booths to the soldiers for the greater good. Her efforts raised $25 million worth of war bonds, the equivalent of $343 million today. However, her efforts to raise money were overlooked once again in 1942 when the United States government seized her patent for the secret communication system because she was an alien who had not yet received her citizenship. In 1946, Lamar began to direct her own movies. She always takes the narrative into her own hands. It's what makes her feel like she's somebody living among us today that accidentally wandered into the past. She decides, because she's fighting Louis B. Mayer all the time, to just start her own production company. And no one was doing that, not male or female at that time. In 1969, Lamar traced what had happened to her invention the communication system had not been used for its original purpose in World War II. It appeared to be ahead of its time, as the Navy had reconsidered the technology and applied it to the weaponry of the 1962 Cuban Missile Crisis during the Cold War. Unfortunately, her patent had expired in 1959, so Lamar and Anthile had not received payment nor gotten any acknowledgement until more than 50 years after their patent was granted. Before spread spectrum technology, the world communicated through telegraphs. But after it was introduced, not only does the U.S. military have access to more secure communication servers, but the world has become more interconnected than ever. The technology led to the introduction of wireless local area networks that power our daily lives, like home security systems. It is also the foundation for technologies we use daily, like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and GPS. And then in the latter half of the last century, uh, it started exploding into use in, uh, for the rest of us in cellular telephones with CDMA networks, and then with the rise of Wi-Fi in the late 90s. If not for Hetty's invention, these companies would never have established any sort of business empire. We as a world can focus on lowering sexist barriers to make a better world become a reality. Hedy Lamar brings into light the fact that performer privacy and women's bodies cannot be exploited for profit anymore. Countless inspirational stories of women in science, such as Lamar's, have paved the way for women empowerment movements. For example, the Me Too movement promotes speaking out against sexual harassment. Despite the setbacks in Lamar's life that tried to take away her individuality, her mind was what broke through them, not her face. Lamar defied the restrictions that would stop her from engineering an invention used today, spread spectrum technology. Was she a professional inventor? Did she let men control her? Did everyone believe in her? The inspiration of Hedy Lamar's determination in herself to change the world when nobody else believed in her is a model for females worldwide that how you look, others' words, and your career do not define who you are as a person. You do. We thank you, Mother of Wi-Fi. Give the world the best you have, and you'll be kicked into the sea. 
give the world the best you've got anyway.